has no rules, no boundaries. He doesn't flinch at torture, human trafficking, or genocide. He's not loyal to a flag or a country or any set of ideals. He trades blood for money. He's your new best friend. With over a thousand monsters to choose from in D&D, it can be hard to know which ones to use, and even harder to know how to play them. What weapons do they favor? What tactics would they use? How do they interact with other types of monsters? These are all questions that can come up to DMs that are looking to make their combats more enticing for their players. It's certainly one that I struggled with. That's why I'm back today with another monster breakdown for D&D. Hello again everyone, I'm Bill from Altroll, and today I'm going to dive into a brief history of a D&D creature, how that history was adapted into 5th edition, and how this lore can help game masters make their combat encounters better. So, whether you're here for the cool lore breakdown or for the combat tactics, I'm hoping to give you a lot more to chew on when it comes to the monsters we face in D&D. For our ninth episode, let's examine a monster that's so fierce that even orcs won't ally with them. The Knoll. Knolls were first introduced to D&D in 1973, in Book 2 of the OD&D White Box Set. Believed to be inspired by Knowles from The Book of Wonder, a collection of Irish fantasy stories written by Lord Dunsany, Knowles are humanoids with the head of a hyena. Back in the 70s, Knowles had little purpose beyond just being another creature for the players to kill. Their original lore stated that Knowles were just a cross between gnomes and trolls, a joke background relying on clever wordplay. Over the various editions of D&D since then, more and more has been written about gnolls that splush them out into an actual race of monsters, introducing things like their relationship to the demon lord Yanogu, their pack-driven society, and other gnoll variants like the Flind and Pack Lord. In 5th edition, gnolls are feral humanoids that attack settlements along the frontiers and borderlands of civilization without warning slaughtering their victims and devouring their flesh. Originally spawned from regular hyenas that feasted on the slaughter left behind by the demon lord Yanogu's rampage across the material plain, Knolds were scattered to the wind after his banishment back to the abyss. Since then, they move in packs, raiding and pillaging settlements at random before returning to the wilderness. Attributed to the influence from Yinogu, gnolls are the epitome of evil, with absolutely no goodness or compassion within them. They cannot be coerced, reasoned with, or paid to spare anything or anyone caught in their path. Their bloodlust is so great that when they don't have a common enemy, they'll even begin fighting amongst themselves to satiate their thirst for destruction. They relish the slaughter more than the fight, though, and when choosing a place to raid, gnolls will favor easy or unsuspecting targets. They'll descend upon remote villages and farms to destroy and devour anything left in their wake, but will avoid fortified strongholds, castles, or anything that might put up a reasonable defense. As such, the greatest way to avoid a knoll warband is to hide away in castles and cities, hoping that they move on before the destruction gets too bad. As part of their nomadic, raiding nature, gnolls don't create anything of value for their society. They rarely build structures beyond basic defenses, scavenge weapons and armor from their victims, and see little value in the finer things in life. Their definition of art, for example, is tying ears, teeth, scalps, and other trophies from their defeated foes onto their patchwork armor. While they do have a language to call their own, it mostly consists of cackling, howling, and laughing, and relies on gestures and facial expressions to communicate basic concepts. In summary, gnolls are pure bloodlust in monstrous form, raiding and devouring anything in their path as they move across the world. 
Now that we've examined their lore, let's pivot over to their mechanics by looking at their stat block. This is what the Knoll's stat block looks like. Let's break it down section by section and look at what's listed here in detail. Starting at the top, we have their size, creature type, and alignment. Size in 5th edition defines the space a creature takes up in combat, with a medium creature taking up a 5 foot by 5 foot square or hex on a battle map. Using the 3.5 edition Dungeon Master's Guide, shown here, gnolls can be between 4 to 8 feet tall and weigh anywhere between 60 and 500 pounds. Their creature type is humanoid, with gnoll in parentheses. The gnoll subrace includes all variations of gnolls, from the basic gnoll, to the fang of Yinogu, to the undead witherling. Alignment broadly describes a creature's general outlook on the world, and combines their moral beliefs with their attitudes towards society and order. The alignment of the gnoll is chaotic evil, meaning they act with arbitrary violence spurred by their greed, hatred, or bloodlust. Below that top bar are the rest of the gnoll's stats, which are essential for the mechanical play of the creature by the Dungeon Master. The gnoll has an armor class of 15, 5d8 hit points, or 22 on average, and a movement speed of 30 feet. This armor class of 15 comes with the use of a shield, so should the gnoll wield a two-handed weapon, its armor class would be lowered to 13. Looking at their ability scores, they have 14 Strength, 12 Dexterity, 11 Constitution, 6 Intelligence, 10 Wisdom, and 7 Charisma. With 10 being average for an ability score, the gnoll has High Strength, Average Dexterity, Constitution, and Wisdom, and low intelligence and charisma. For their skills and proficiencies, the Knoll has dark vision out to 60 feet, a passive perception of 10, speak Knoll, have a proficiency bonus of plus 2, have a challenge rating of 1 half, and award 100 experience points when killed. In terms of special abilities, the Knoll has the Rampage ability, which states when the Knoll reduces a creature to zero hit points with a melee attack on its turn, it can take a bonus action to move up to half its speed and make a bite attack. For offensive actions, the Knoll has a bite attack, a spear attack, and a longbow attack. The bite attack has a plus four to hit a reach of 5 feet, and deals 1d4 plus 2 piercing damage on a hit. The spear attack has a plus 4 to hit, a melee reach of 5 feet, a thrown range of 20 feet normally and 60 feet at disadvantage, deals 1d6 plus 2 piercing damage on a hit when held in one hand or thrown, and deals 1d8 plus 2 piercing damage if used with two hands to make a melee attack. The longbow attack has a plus 3 to hit, a normal range of 150 feet, a long range of 600 feet, and deals 1d8 plus 1 piercing damage on a hit. Lastly, we have their environment tags. When using digital resources, we can see that gnolls tend to be found in deserts, forests, grasslands, and hills. Now that we've gone through and sorted out their stat block, we can begin to relate the Knoll's lore and abilities to how we should be using them in combat encounters. Specifically, we're going to be looking at how they behave, how they would approach a combat situation, and how to get into the mind of a Knoll if you want to fight effectively as one. How do we do this? Well, we'll need to take the lore and stat block of the monster, and compare that with how that information is intended, referencing tactics and interpretations from The Monsters Know What They're Doing by Keith Amon. Let's start by going through Amon's key assumptions one by one and relating them to the Knoll as we go. 
The first of Amon's assumptions is that most creatures want to survive, and if seriously wounded, will try to flee combat. Exceptions to this rule are fanatics or intelligent beings who believe they'll be hunted down and killed if they do flee. Seriously wounded can be subjective, but we can assume that threshold to roughly be one-third of the creature's health. With an average of 22 hit points, one-third of that would be rounded to 7. So, if a knoll is reduced to 7 hit points or fewer, it will begin to flee combat. Next up, let's look at how their alignment can impact their thinking. On the scale of good to evil, good creatures tend to be friendly to others, whereas evil creatures are hostile to others. On the scale of lawful to chaotic, lawful monsters may try to capture or non-lethally subdue others, whereas chaotic monsters may kill them. Since gnolls are chaotic evil, we know two major things about them. First, since they're chaotic, gnolls will try to kill their opponents, with it also being likely that they'll want to eat them. Secondly, since they're evil creatures, gnolls are going to be outwardly hostile to other creatures. Continuing with their mindset, let's dive into some of their mental ability scores. Gnolls have an intelligence score of 6. With regard to intelligence, Amon states, a creature with intelligence of 7 or less operates purely from instinct. That doesn't mean it uses its features ineffectively, only that it has one preferred modus operandi and isn't going to be able to adjust if it stops working. This just means that the gnoll's preferred method of attack is charging straight forward at an enemy in a bloodthirsty rampage, substituting intelligent tactics for fearless aggression. When it comes to wisdom, gnolls have a wisdom score of 10. With regard to wisdom, Amon states, a creature with wisdom of 8 to 11 knows when to flee, but is indiscriminate in choosing targets. As stated in their lore, gnolls are opportunistic and aren't going to look for tough fights. In combat, they'll look for the easiest targets in battle and are likely to turn tail once their target starts fighting back. Now that we've set up how they think, let's look at the Gnoll's physical abilities that influence how they fight. Thinking like a Mon, we can assume the following. Creatures with high strength focus on melee combat and won't need to compensate with greater numbers. As such, they won't need to outnumber an enemy to be willing to take a fight. Creatures with average dexterity, whatever their strength or constitution, will need to choose their battles carefully. Since their ability to avoid damage is poor, they'll probably want some other type of advantage. Creatures with average constitution might have a hit point advantage over their enemies, but will still try to gain advantages in combat through stealth and ambushes. To recap our earlier examination, gnolls have high strength and average dexterity and constitution. Comparing this to the assumptions we put forward, gnolls excel as hand-to-hand -hand fighters, using their dark vision to plan ambushes in the night and rushing into melee to overwhelm their opponents. So, with all of these assumptions laid out and applied to gnolls, what do we now know about how to use them in combat? First, gnolls use shock and awe to rush unprepared foes, attacking with ferocious melee strikes to try and overwhelm their enemies. While they do have a longbow on their stat block, it's going to be less effective than their spear attack, though they may try to use that longbow to attack fleeing foes. Second, gnolls will choose targets indiscriminately but won't be able to realize when their preferred course of action won't work, leading them to fight based off instinct rather than tactics. Third, gnolls will use their full movement speed to get within range of their target and attack with their spears until the target is down. Once a target is reduced to zero hit points, they will use their bonus action to rampage toward another enemy within 15 feet and bite them. 
fourth, if reduced to seven hit points or fewer, reduced to half their starting number, or if their leader is killed, a knoll or group of knolls will begin to flee combat. Given their ferocity, knolls who are forced to retreat will likely try to regroup and attack again later with more forces, though they're just as likely to move on to easier targets as well. Fifth, if knolls win a combat encounter, they're likely to execute their defeated foes, feasting on their flesh and taking their teeth and scalps to decorate their armor. And with that, we come to the end of today's video on the gnolls. A largely overlooked enemy, gnolls are a good mid-tier opponent for adventuring parties, though their nature as purely evil and bloodthirsty does make them somewhat simple at times. However, what I want to know is, what do you think of the gnoll? You can let me know in the comments down below, or you can join the Altworld Discord using the link in the description to discuss it there. While on the server, you can pop into our courses that teach the basics of D&D, and if you like what we do here, supporting us on our Ko-fi goes a long way in helping us keep Altworld going. That's all I had for you though, so thank you all for watching, make sure to have a great rest of your day, and I'll see all of you next time.